Well, hello everyone. Um, I have posted a couple of videos on YouTube with me um, playing um, Jane's um, F15 on a Windows 10 PC. And uh, everybody um, seemed, a lot of people actually seemed to like it. And I had a few requests in the comments asking um, how I could. Um, if I could post a video uh, showing how was how I was able to run this game on a Windows 10 uh, install, being that it's about 25 years old, uh, so um, I'm gonna go through some of the steps that I did to get the game running, and hopefully it can help uh, others as well. So let's start. So the first thing is. Um, this website right here, PC Gaming Wiki, uh, it has uh, like pretty decent instructions and links on what you would f need to get the game running. Um, I had to modify a few things based on some of my own research on Reddit and SimHQ forums and stuff like that. A lot of people did some different things to get it running. Uh, I'll show you what I did to get it running, but most of it is right here. I'm going to post this link in the uh, description and pinned comments. So the first thing you need, of course, is um, you need the CD itself. This is just a collection of some of my old games that I have. Uh, I had a lot more, but um, some of them got lost. Uh, I sold a few on eBay, but this is what I have. So you basically need the, uh, the CD itself. But here's the thing. It will not install from the CD. So what you have to do is you have to copy the contents of the CD into a folder. So you create a folder called um, in your hard drive called F15 and you create a subfolder called install. That's right here. And copy the contents of the CD into this folder. Once that is done, um, you click on the F15 icon and double click on it and install it. You install it all the way. Don't install the DirectX part because this was like DirectX 5, I think, and now we are at like, God knows what, like 12, 13, 14, not sure. But um, yeah, so don't, don't install the DirectX, but install the full game. So um, make sure you click on expert settings when you're installing it and install the full game, everything from the CD should go into your install. So I basically installed it in the same folder like CF15. So this is my install folder and these are like, this is everything from um, the game itself that was installed. Once that is done, you would need to download and uh, install the patch, which is, if you click on the link in this, uh, on this web page, it will take you here, uh, that's the mirror, you click on here, you install the patch. You will download the patch. Once the patch is in downloaded, this is, it comes in as a RAR uh, file, you unzip it, that's the contents right here. You basically copy everything, so you literally just go highlight everything, copy, and paste it right into your F15 folder. So that's um, step two. Step three would be you would need a direct draw wrapper. Otherwise, the menus are not going to work. Even with the wrapper, the menus don't work perfectly, but at least you can get it running. Um, so you click on the link here. Uh, you get to the wrapper. You click here. You download it and it goes into your downloads that's this right here so basically you would need these two files right here the aqrit and the direct draw.dll so you basically copy these two files put it right into your f15 folder that's so they show up right here so now you open the aqrit file uh, with any text editor. I just use Notepad, just makes it easier. Um, 
the two things that you need to change, like when you first open it, everything is going to be zeros. So the two things that you need to change, uh, number one, is this force direct direct draw emulation. So that from zero, you'll change to one. And the uh, single processor affinity, you'll change from zero to one. So this basically forces uh, direct draw emulation, as the name says. This one over here, um, if you have like a multi-core CPU like most of us do right now, um, I mean, this game was released back in 1998. We had like Pentium 2s at the time, single processor, single core. Um, so we don't like, it just, I just find it easy to like, if you just uh, make it just use one core, uh, the game is does not crash when you first launch it. So, so these are the two settings that you'll need to change from zero to one, uh, force direct draw and single processor affinity. Once that is done, you just basically go file, save, and then file exit. Once that is done, um, the next step is, uh, download and install nglide so this game um uses 3dfx glide which of course we don't anymore so you need a glide emulator for that nglide works perfectly for me at least um i have tried it on a amd card and I have tried it on a nvidia card as well um and it works like the latest version is 2.10. So you just click on download, it downloads it. Um, that's uh, that right here. You double click on it, you install it. Once that is installed, you basically um, double click on it run it um, so the only thing that you would change over here is the screen resolution I mean the game itself runs out like 640 by 480 um, so you can you have different options you can do it by desktop by app so if you do it by app it's gonna keep it at 640 by 480 uh, by desktop like mine is like 1080 by it's a 1080p so and then but basically any other resolution except for either by app or 640 by 480 it will crash so if you try to run it at 1080p for me it crashed so what you can do is so it doesn't look pixelated uh you basically double the resolution like from 640 by 480 to, to uh, 1280 by 960 so you're just multiplying it by two um and it it works um and you don't get like that um, um, pixelated look. So for me, that worked. Um, so that's step number four. Now, step number five is you right click on the shortcut that was created, or you create a shortcut to your desktop after you install it. You go to properties and you go to compatibility. Um, you basically check, run this program and compare compatibility mode and you select Windows 98 Windows ME uh, I've tried XP service pack 2 service pack 3 and it did not work um, it did not launch so that's the only thing that actually works so once that is done as per the instructions here like if you scroll down all the way uh, there's a folder in the install call movies as this right here so you basically delete everything except for these right here so there are going to be a whole bunch of movies that are saved in there um, one of them is like the startup movie and um, some other things so you want to delete all of them and just leave these um, and that's what I did here uh, so these are the only ones that are left so basically once that is done um you can basically go ahead and try and launch the game and see if it works so let's 
give that a shot. And there you have it, folks. Bahrain International Tower, Chevy flight, request takeoff clearance. It runs. Chevy 1, Bahrain International uh, Tower, winds are calm, ceiling unlimited. This so I hope you find this helpful. Clear for takeoff. And um, I'll try to help out in the comments. If anyone has any questions, I'll try my best to help out. But these are the steps that I follow, and I can basically get it to run. So the only thing I would note is um, when it comes to joysticks, it only uh, works like if you have like a separate joystick uh, with like a separate stick and a separate throttle, like two different uh, USB connections, or like if you have pedals, like so you get like three different connections, it will only recognize the first one that's in your uh, uh, Windows game settings. Um, so basically, but in the case where you have uh, something like a uh, SciTech X52, X52 Pro, uh, where it's basically one USB connection and you have both the stick and the throttle, uh, it will the stick and the throttle will work. But if you have like a Warthog or um, any of the new um, other ones, the fancier ones, they would only recognize the stick or, or the throttle, not both. Um, so that's the only caveat. So, um, yep. So that's, that's my thing. Uh, hopefully this, again, this is helpful to others and, um, well, hopefully you have the game and you enjoy. And if you do, uh, just leave a nice comment. Thank you.